Gold in the Net has five simple rules to follow when doing a standard butterfly. The first rule is to keep your stick on the ice before, during, and after the butterfly is complete. The second rule is to keep your gloves in a ready position, up high ready for movement. If the gloves drop by the side, it makes it very difficult to move your gloves down and then try to bring them up fast to the upper part of the net. By holding them in a ready position, they will follow the puck up high or low, so maintain their position when you are practicing this movement. Rule number three is to keep your knees together when doing a butterfly. If you lock your knees together, it keeps your five hole closed when you are in the butterfly. Anytime the knees are not together, the goalie usually leaves a small hole between their legs, which is the center point of the player's shooting lane. So make sure that you close it up by getting your knees together while going down into a butterfly position. Rule number four is to keep your upper body straight. You want to maximize your upper body to its fullest coverage. Your knee, waist, and shoulder should all be in a straight vertical line. Many goalies seem to slump down into a butterfly with their back end touching their skates. Here you can see that when the shoulders are low, there is much room in the upper part of the net. Watch how much more coverage the goalie can get if he keeps his upper body straight. And finally, rule five, apply a forward motion structure as you drop into your butterfly. Here, your skates should remain where they were originally placed while your knees drop forward towards the puck. Everyone that's strapped on the pads has heard these lines before. You gotta get in position. Or, that goalie's great, he's always in position. But position is a generic term to a young goaltender unless given a clear definition. Position is putting your body in the best possible place to stop the puck. More specifically, position is made up of three parts. Square, angle, and depth. Once in position, you must set your feet. Being set is the foundation of position. By being set, I mean no forward, backward, or lateral movement in the feet or hands. When goalies are set, they give themselves the best chance to either react or block effectively given the read of the play. The first point of position is square. Present as much of your equipment to the shooter as possible. Proper puck tracking and full rotations are keys to gaining squareness. In order to be on angle, a goalie must first be square to the puck. 
square and being on angle are very similar. A good way to describe being on angle is to draw a line from the puck to the back of the net. If a goalie is on angle, this line will bisect the goalie in route to the net. Imagine the net being the center of a large circle. The angle of the puck to the middle of the net is the radius on the circle. The curved line of the crease makes a much smaller circle. Place the goaltender at the top of the crease. When the puck moves around the outer circle, the goalie moves to adjust to the new angle. Look to see how little the goalie has to move in relation to the distance the puck has to move. Since the goalie is moving on the circumference of a much smaller circle than the puck, he moves a much shorter distance. Here's what the shooter sees from the top angle. From the blue line angle, there is less net visible to the shooter. And bottom angle. Depth is the amount of space between the goalie and the goal line. Finding ideal depth has a lot to do with reading the situation. The shooter doesn't have much net to see, but if Joe lost too much depth early, you can clearly see that the shooter has a lot more available options and will be likely to fire a shot in this position. Once depth is established, the goalie must be patient with depth. This phrase means that you as a goalie don't have to move just because the shooter is moving. The shooter can't deke unless he or she gets within approximately six to eight feet. If you read the shooter has speed, then it's okay to give up some depth. To do so, just transfer weight onto the heel half of the skate. No need to take a big C cut back because C-cuts cause you to lose angle and squareness to the puck. Once the play crosses the red line, power stride out to establish initial depth. From this point, read the play to determine playing depth. Taking the first shot with your heels on the edge of the crease is a good spot. The number of attackers versus the number of defenders in a line rush and types of net drives determine the goalie's final depth. To start the push-stop recovery drill, the goalie will start with his back on the goal line, right against the net. So now the goalie will push with his left foot and stop with the right foot, lined up on the dot, stop. Notice Tyler is in a good stance, his feet are slightly slightly outside his shoulders, his hands are in front of his body and at an equal height. Common mistakes would be Tyler pinching his knees in, unlock please, or Tyler putting his glove up too high or down too low. Notice Tyler's rotation of his glove is at a three o'clock position in front of his body so he can see both his glove and blocker. Now Tyler will go into a butterfly, notice his hands remain in front of him, his pants and five holer sealed up. His stick is in front of his body as well. To rotate to the coach, Tyler will look first, bring his hands around towards the puck, and now he will get up with the proper foot, which is his right foot in this drill. Now Tyler's recovered to the coach, and I'll now shoot, and Tyler will get up with his proper foot again, the proper foot being the foot which will push him towards his rebound. It's very important that the goalies follow their rebound to create good habits that will be used in a game. Notice as Tyler is on the post, his glove side foot, his heel is inside the post, his pad wraps around the post, his stick is in a position where it'll block a pass out shot, and his glove seals the hole 
near his knee and post. Hey guys, I'm Kevin Weeks, and today we're going to discuss one of the toughest plays in goaltending, the breakaway. Breakaways and shootouts are a great opportunity though for goaltenders to strut their stuff, and in today's game, they can often decide who takes the extra point. While every goaltender is different, here are some key skills and techniques that will give you an edge on the shooters. Guys, point number one, you want to make sure that you try to come out and challenge as much as possible. You want to take away as much net from that shooter as possible. And by doing that, you can be a little bit more aggressive, especially if you have time in a situation like this where it's a longer breakaway. Number two, you want to make sure that you match your speed to the shooter's speed. Okay, if the shooter's coming in slow, you can't back in too quickly. If he's coming in fast, you can't back in too slowly. You want to try to time your speed as best you can with the shooter. And lastly, number three, this is the toughest one. You want to try to make sure that you don't make the first move. If you're trying to be aggressive and make a poke check, to knock the puck off the blade of the shooter, that's a different story. But if you plan on following the shooter and honoring the shooter, you want to try not to flinch first, because basically this is a game of cat and mouse. So we're going to do a couple breakaways, one from each of the three different angles here. Get a good aggressive start. Glove up. There you go. Nice save. That's it. Way to battle. Way to be desperate. That a boy. Good job. Good job, way to follow it, way to follow it. That's it, okay, on that one, good job. The only thing is you wanna make sure you match his speed just like you did the first two, because he was coming in real slow. Another thing is here, when you were out and you got set, you came in a little bit quickly, right? You started retreating a little fast and you gave away some of your net because you came back a little bit too quickly. But just like the first two, you want to match your speed to his and you'll be in an even better position, okay? All right, Jose, let's take a look. That's it. Way to stay with him. Way to stay with him. Good job. Good patience. Good patience there. Okay, you remember what we talked about, making sure we keep that puck in the middle of our body, in the middle of the chest, and not playing the body, right? So we always want to have the shooter's puck right in the middle of our chest. Good job setting up. Just make sure for your angle you keep that puck in the center of your chest at all times. Let's go. Nice, nice. Good job, you guys. Well done.
Okay, let's ready.